Hello and welcome to our course selection evening presentation. My name is Katherine Appleby and I am head of the Guidance and University Counseling Department at Crestwood. This evening, we're also joined by my colleague, Miss Christine Somerville. If you have absolutely any questions after tonight's presentation, please do not hesitate to reach out to either of us. Our emails and phone extensions are listed here on the screen. Otherwise, please sit back, relax, and enjoy tonight's presentation. As we start to think and plan ahead to the summer, I'd like to start this presentation off by discussing Crestwood's summer school program. We offer a wide variety of classes all the way from grade nine to grade 12, starting with math and Canadian geography in grade nine, civics and careers in grade 10, which are actually two separate classes that will run two weeks each, functions and communications technology in grade 11, and finally advanced functions in grade 12. The specific dates will be posted in the newsletter in the next couple of weeks, but ultimately the program will run from the end of June to the middle of July, and we will be striving for an in-class delivery as long as the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Health allow us to do so. So once again, please look out for details in terms of registration and specific dates in the newsletter in the next couple of weeks if you are interested in enrolling your son, daughter, or student in the Crestwood Summer School Program. This evening's presentation will cover three main areas. We will start off with an overview of what is required to graduate with an Ontario High School Diploma, and then we'll move on to course selection and outline compulsory courses as well as elective options for each grade and provide a breakdown of Zello, which is our course selection software. We'll finish our evening by discussing the various post-secondary pathways and how to pick courses according to one's post-secondary goals. Uh, as we talk about course selection, you will hear us use terms such as compulsory or elective quite frequently. And to ensure that everyone has a clear understanding of what exactly these terms are referring to, I'm going to give a quick overview of each. So compulsory courses are courses that are required for students to take as it fulfills part of the Ontario Secondary School Diploma or the OSSD requirements. So an example of a compulsory course would be English. This is compulsory for all grades from 9 to 12. Elective courses, on the other hand, are classes that are optional. So these are the classes that students can choose during their course selection process. And students can select these electives based on their interests. And each one of these elective courses will count towards meeting their 30 credit graduation requirement. Finally, prerequisite courses are specific courses students must take before taking another course at the next grade level. So for example, grade 10 science is a prerequisite course that must be completed before taking any grade 11 science such as physics or chemistry. In order to understand course selection, we're going to start with the foundation of graduation requirements so all parents and students understand what is required of them in order to achieve the Ontario Secondary School Diploma. There are four main components to achieving the Ontario Secondary School Diploma, and they are listed here on the screen above me. The first component I'm going to talk about are compulsory courses. So students must complete 18 compulsory courses in order to achieve their diploma. 15 of those 18 courses are listed here on the screen beside me. Um, these are stretched out from grade 9 to 12, and on the next slide you will see how they are specifically scheduled over the next four years. The previous slide displayed the first 15 compulsory courses. Now I'm gonna talk about the remaining three. The remaining three compulsory courses come in the form of group credits, a group one, two, and three credit. For a group one credit, we have to have a student now take an additional course 
falling under one of the following subheadings listed on the screen. An example of a group one credit could be a grade 10 French or a grade 11 American history, which falls under the social sciences. Same rules apply here for the group two credit. A student must pick up an additional course that falls under one of the following subheadings. An example of a group two course could be an additional phys ed, a business studies, an additional art course in music, drama, or visual, um, or carrying on with the French program. Finally, we have the group three credit. So a student must take an additional course that falls under one of the following subheadings on the screen. For example, a senior science or a computer studies course um, and a technological education course. So good thing is if your Crestwood student has been here since grade eight or grade nine, they have taken um, one or two communication technology courses. So they have automatically already finished the group three requirement. On the screen, you can see an example of a student who selected their three group credits um, over their four years. So in grade nine, based on our Crestwood program, they automatically got their group three by taking the Com Tech. In grade 10, they selected grade 10 drama, which knocked off the group two credit. And then finally, in grade 11, the student decided to take American history, which knocked off the group one. Aside from the 18 compulsory courses, students are also required to complete 12 elective credits. These elective credits are chosen by the student based on their own personal interests, as well as to fit for their post-secondary goals. This chart demonstrates the progression of elective courses through the student's four years of high school. You can see in grade nine and grade 10, most of the courses are already populated for students as these courses are required for the Ontario Secondary School Diploma. As students enter grade 11 and grade 12, you can start to see there's a lot more flexibility in terms of the number of electives they have available to them. So all the courses that are bolded in this chart are the elective options that the student is selecting. Once a student enters grade 12, they really have full range of elective possibilities as there's only one required course for grade 12, which is their English. Outside of that, they can select their elective options based off their post-secondary goals and their own interest areas. In addition to the 30 credits, students must also fulfill the literacy requirement. To meet this requirement, students must write and pass the Ontario Secondary School Literacy Test, also known as the OSSLT. Students in grade 10 and 11 will write the OSSLT this year in spring of 2022. Students who happen to be unsuccessful at their first attempt at the test will have the opportunity to rewrite the test the following year. If students happen to be unsuccessful again at their second attempt, they still have the opportunity to fulfill this requirement by completing the literacy course. The final requirement needed to earn one's Ontario Secondary School Diploma is completing 40 hours of community involvement. These hours can be completed by getting involved with community events, volunteering for charitable organizations, or even helping out with school-wide initiatives. Although students are only required to complete 40 hours to meet that graduation requirement, we do encourage all of our students to go above and beyond those 40 hours. The reason being is not only is it a wonderful opportunity for students to explore their interest areas, but it also truly helps when it comes to university and college applications. More and more university programs are requesting supplementary applications from students. These supplementary applications are an opportunity for students to showcase to the universities how they've been involved in the school and wider community. The more that they've been able to volunteer and get involved, the better they're able to speak to skills such as leadership and initiative in these supplementary applications. I know the past few years now have been a little bit more challenging when it comes to accessing different volunteer opportunities because of the restrictions that COVID has brought. That being said, there are still many opportunities that are happening in person or virtually that students can still get involved with. For example, Sending Sunshine has been a popular volunteer opportunity that many of our students have been involved with over the years. And that involves writing letters to seniors in a retirement home. 
So that's just one example. Um, but there's lots of other opportunities that we are posting on the EDSBE Community Involvement Group at least once a week. So if students are feeling stuck and they need a place to start to explore what options are out there, the Community Involvement page on EDSBE is a wonderful place to start. Of course, if students are requiring a little bit more support finding a volunteer opportunity that they're interested or excited about, they're always more than welcome to book an appointment with us in Gardens and we're happy to help. Before we jump into our specific course selection choices for grade 9, 10, 11, and 12, I'm quickly going to review how you can read and understand a course code, which is a really important tool in high school. So the first three letters of a course code designate the subject specifically and the department that it falls under. Here we can see FSF, which designates that this is a course that falls under the French department. Next, you have a number. The numbers um, relate to the grade level, 9 being 1, grade 10 being 2, grade 11 being 3, which you can see here on the screen, and grade 12 being designated with the number 4. Finally, each course code is going to end in an additional letter, and this is going to tell you the level or the type of course that it is. In grade 9 and 10, you can see three possible letters. You can see D for academic, you can see P for applied, or you can see O for open. At the grade 11 and 12 level, there are three possible letters. U stands for university level, M stands for mixed university and college level courses, and O stands for open. Students in grade nine are required to take a full course load of eight classes. And on the next slide, I will show you how those break down between compulsory and elective. The grade nine program is quite structured for our students with seven compulsory and one elective course. The one elective course um, is already pre-scheduled based on our Crestwood program, and that is Communications Technology 10. The one choice that students do have is choosing their one art compulsory course, and they have a choice between drama, music, or visual arts. Grade 10 students are required to take a full course load, meaning they must have at least eight classes. We encourage our students to be mindful of the group one, two, and three requirements when selecting their elective courses. That way they can make sure to fulfill these requirements early on. So we can see from the chart here that there are five compulsory courses for our grade 10 students. We have English, Math, Science, Canadian History, as well as Civics and Careers. Civics and Careers are two separate courses, however, both are worth 0.5 credits. So half of the year, our grade 10s will study Civics, the other half of the year will be devoted to Careers. Aside from these five compulsory courses, our students are able to select three elective courses to complete their full course load of eight classes. Students who are on a reach ahead schedule who are currently taking grade 10 history in their grade nine year will have the choice of an additional elective. Listed here are the elective options students can choose from arranged by subject. Classes that are listed in red are grade 11 reach ahead courses, which are available to our grade 10 students. When considering which of these electives to choose, we strongly encourage our students to focus on their interest areas. Aside from their compulsory courses, there are no prerequisite courses students must take in grade 10 in order to qualify them for a grade 11 elective. So this means students are really able to focus on areas they would like to explore further without having to worry if this would close any doors for them in grade 11 and grade 12. Students entering into grade 11 with 16 accumulated credits from grade 9 and 10 are required to take eight courses or a full course load in grade 11. Students coming into grade 11 with more than 16 accumulated credits from grade 9 and 10 are allowed to take seven courses plus one spare. 
At the time of grade 11 course selection, it's also really important for students to take stock of those group credits, those group one, two, and three requirements, and figure out if they're missing any, and definitely try and schedule those in now so they don't have to worry about them in grade 12. Grade 11 course selection is also quite significant as it does lay the groundwork for grade 12 courses and then furthermore post-secondary goals and pathways. So it's at this time that we really encourage grade 11s to start diving into post-secondary research and check out websites such as Ontario University's Info and OntarioColleges.ca to start to figure out the admission requirements and prerequisite courses for their programs and then they can use that to inform their grade 11 course selection choices. Students in grade 11 are required to complete two compulsory credits, English and Math. For Math, they have two options. They can either participate in the Functions, the MCR3U, which is the university level, or the Functions and Applications, the MCF3M, which is the mixed level university and college. Students who are interested in taking the mixed level course because they struggled in grade 10 um, will need to discuss this with guidance as it does limit and affect post-secondary pathways and goals. Beyond the two compulsory credits, students now get the option to choose six elective courses to round out the rest of their schedule. Here we have the full list of grade 11 courses offered to our students. They are organized by category, so you can see under the various departments, and the courses highlighted in red are reach ahead courses, so as long as students have the appropriate prerequisite course, they are allowed to take these grade 12 courses while they are in grade 11. For our students going into grade 12, they are required to take a minimum of six courses. Though they are only required to take six, for any students who have earned only 24 credits by the end of grade 11, we recommend taking a minimum of seven courses. The reason being is we want to make sure all our students are meeting the 30 credit requirement, which is their 18 compulsory and 12 electives. Students who are applying to university will require six grade 12 university level or mixed level courses in order to be considered for admission. Before selecting any courses, it is very important students are checking admission requirements for their desired university or college program. This way, they're ensuring that they're selecting the appropriate courses for their given pathway. To check out these details, we have encouraged all our grade 11 students to explore the Ontario University Info website or to visit ontariocolleges.ca. By the time students enter their grade 12 year, there is only one required course left, which is their grade 12 English. The remainder of their electives, students can select based on what is required for the university or college program they are interested in pursuing. Each post-secondary pathway, whether it be business or architecture or sciences, will have their own unique set of course requirements needed. For that reason, it is very important students do their research to identify what courses are required for the program area of interest before selecting any of their electives. Just as an example, any student who is interested in pursuing engineering in university would need to select science and math based electives such as advanced functions, calculus, chemistry, and physics in order to qualify for admission. Here is an overview of all the grade 12 course options available. Just to reiterate, when selecting their electives, it is important that the grade 12s first select the courses that will be required for their university program of interest, and then with the remaining electives, choose courses that they feel most interested in or most confident towards. At the beginning of February, the guidance team will be visiting all of the English classes throughout Crestwood to complete grade-specific course selection presentations. In these presentations, we will be teaching our students how to submit their course choices using our online software, Zello. Students must log into Zello using their Crestwood email, and then they'll be able to add in their course choices, review those choices with you at home, and submit by the specified deadline. The next slide will take you through a detailed walkthrough of how students can access Zello, review their course choices, 
add any choices to their schedule and then submit for final approval. In order for students to access Zello, they are going to first start by logging into their EdSpeed page. Once they get to their main landing screen, they're going to visit their appropriate guidance group, so either the 7 to 10 guidance or the 11 to 12. Once the appropriate group is opened up, they will find that in the top left-hand corner, there is the Zello login for course selection. They'll be able to open this up. They will need to log in with their Crestwood email, and then this is what their landing page looks like. From here, they're going to move over to the right and open up their course planner. When a student opens up their course planner, they'll see a nice, beautiful layout of their four-year plan. This student is in grade eight, going into grade nine, therefore we'll need to choose courses for grade nine. Any compulsory courses are already going to be preloaded in by the guidance department, so the student doesn't have to worry about adding those. All they have to worry about is adding in their elective courses. In grade nine, students only take one art elective, so I'm going to open up the art elective now and show um, you the options. All the possible elective courses will drop down here in the menu. The student is able to press these plus signs to get a full course description, just in case they need to do a little bit more research to figure out what course they want to choose. They can see the pathways, so if they take this course now, what course they can then get in into the future based on this. Okay, and then once they're happy with the course they've chosen, they're going to hit the add button. It's going to take a few seconds to load and then it will populate into their course planner. If for any reason the student wants to change it, they can simply press remove and then add in a new course. So again, if they're not happy with this, they can just hit remove and then maybe change their selection to music or visual art. It's totally up to them. Okay, so I'm actually going to add visual arts instead because I'm changing uh, my mind for this student. Again, once it populates in the course planner, we're going to hit the done button here at the top, and then we are going to move back to our main page. So our course selections are in. If the student tries to add in too many courses, they will, will just receive a little warning saying that there are no more periods available in their course plan and they can just cancel their action, press done, and go back to their um, overview page. When they've taken the time to review their courses and electives with their parents, students can simply press ready to submit at the bottom and then this will get sent to the guidance office for review. It's important to understand that once students hit this ready to submit button, they will be locked out of their course selection. As you can see by this little lock here um, in the yellow at the top, if they do need to make any changes after they've submitted or they've pressed submit by accident, they can simply um, send one of their guidance counselors an email and we can unlock it for them. Now that we are well acquainted with Zello, we're going to direct our attention onto post-secondary pathways and how students can select their courses to help work towards and achieve post-secondary goals. The first thing to address is the difference in requirements for university programs versus college programs. To qualify for admission for universities, a student must successfully complete their OSSD and complete six U or M level courses. U level courses meaning university level and M level courses meaning mixed level. Any O or open level courses are not counted towards a student's top six admission average, meaning these O level courses are not going to be used when applying to universities. For entrance into college programs, the requirements are a little less stringent um, students, of course, need to complete their OSSD. However, in terms of the courses that are accepted, there is a little bit more flexibility. Colleges will accept the O open level courses along with any U or M level courses.
So the first pathway we will dive into is the arts, social science, and humanities. This is for students who may be interested in pursuing subjects such as geography or history, sociology or psychology when they enter university or college. This pathway is the least restrictive in terms of what courses or how many courses are required to pursue this path. So the only required course for both grade 11 and then also grade 12 is their English. Aside from their English, students can choose to fill their schedules with elective credits that they are most interested in exploring. You can see under the required English, we have listed some recommended courses which come from a variety of different social science areas, such as religions or different history courses, or the intros to sociology, or psychology, and anthropology. And we encourage students to explore many different areas within social science and humanities in order to develop an understanding of what they're most interested in pursuing under this large umbrella. For students who are interested in business in university, there are two main requirements when they enter grade 11. Their grade 11 English, as well as university level functions, the MCR3U course. These two courses are the only required classes. However, we do uh, have listed here some recommended options, and those would be all related to business. So we have financial accounting 11, economics 11, and our reach ahead option, which is international business 12. When students enter grade 12, they are required um, to take the following courses in order to qualify for university business programs. So they need to have their grade 12 English, advanced functions, and calculus. Aside from these three required courses, students can also choose to add additional business electives um, by adding courses under the recommended section, which would be business leadership, grade 12 economics, and grade 12 accounting. Although we recommend these courses to our students who are interested in business, they are not required by any university program, but rather just offer a wonderful way for students to gain a little bit more familiarity with the common topics that they'll be seeing in their post-secondary business studies. Students who are interested in pursuing engineering in their post-secondary studies have the most amount of required courses in grade 11 and in grade 12. In grade 11, they must take obviously their English as well as their grade 11 functions and physics 11 and chemistry 11. When they enter grade 12 to qualify for engineering programs in university, they must again focus on their math and science courses. The courses that are required for them to gain admission would be English, advanced functions, calculus, physics, and chemistry. This leaves room for one elective, which they can choose to their liking. Any students who are interested in pursuing computer science in university, when they enter grade 11, must ensure they're taking the following courses, English, Functions 11, and Physics. We also recommend students who are interested in computing to take the grade 11 computer science course. In grade 12, in order to qualify for admission to computer science programs, students must ensure they're taking the following, English, Advanced Functions, Calculus, in physics, along with two other elective credits. One of the possible electives that we recommend would be the grade 12 computer science course. Students who are interested in going into a fine art media or design based program have a lot of flexibility when it comes to their course selection very similar to the general arts, social sciences, and humanities students. When it comes to the required courses, the students are going to have to take the credits that are simply tied into the OSSD, which is the English and the math in grade 11, and then the English in grade 12. 
So again, this will not only fulfill the diploma requirements, but these are also the required courses for anyone who wants to go into a fine art, media, or design-based program. When it comes to the recommended courses, um, there's a lot of options that we have at Crestwood. And again, although specific art courses are not actually required for most fine art programs, it is important that students are really getting the exposure in grade 11 and 12 to set them up for applications and for success in post-secondary. So for example, if a student is interested in graphic design or painting and drawing in university, then it would be really highly advisable for them to look at visual arts and communications technology in both grade 11 and 12. Same thing for the other areas. If a student is interested in going into theater or performance studies, it's really important that they then take grade 11 and 12 drama to set them up. When it comes to these post-secondary applications, most fine art, media, and design programs require a portfolio, an audition, or even an artistic letter of intent. So having the practice by taking these courses in grade 11 and 12 will really set these students up for success in completing those tasks as well. Students who are interested in architecture in grade 11 will need to take the following courses. English, Functions 11, Physics 11, and Visual Art, in addition to their four elective choices. In grade 12, they'll have similar requirements. They'll need to take their English, Advanced Functions, Calculus, Physics 12, and Visual Arts 12, along with one additional elective course. Students who are interested in pursuing kinesiology in university will need to take the following courses when they're in grade 11. English, Functions 11, Chemistry, and Biology, as well as four elective credits. When they enter grade 12, they'll need to take English, Advanced Functions, Chemistry, Biology, as well as two other courses. One course that, that we recommend for students interested in kin would be PSK for you, which is the Introduction to Kinesiology course. The final pathway that we'll discuss is the sciences, whether that be life science, medical science, or physical science. The requirements for each are relatively similar. So if you're interested in life science or nursing or medical science, the following courses would be required for grade 11 students. So that would be English, functions, chemistry, and biology, along with four elective courses. When you enter grade 12, the required courses would be English, advanced functions, calculus, chemistry, and biology, and one additional elective credit. If you are someone who is more interested in physical sciences, the following would be required for grade 11, English, functions, chemistry, and physics with your four elective courses. And then in grade 12, following a similar nature, it would be English, advanced functions, calculus, chemistry, and physics, along with one additional elective course. We'd like to thank you all so much for joining us. We hope that this information helps you better navigate the course selection process. But of course, if you have any questions or concern, please don't hesitate to reach out to any member of the guidance department. We are always happy to help. And with that, stay safe and enjoy the rest of your evening.